Okay, in this presentation, we're going to look. I'm just going to fix my mic here for a second. That should be a bit better. Uh, this we're going to look at the Poisson random variable x with a parameter lambda greater than or equal to zero. That's the uh, Poisson rate parameter, and or Poisson mean anyway. And the with uh, has a pros, uh, probability mass uh, function as follows: p x of x is equal to lambda to the to the power of x times e to the minus lambda over x factorial for x is equal to the uh, zero, one, etc., etc., etc. Okay. So what we have to do here is show that for any integer x greater than equal to zero, the probability mass function of x plus one is equal to lambda over x plus one times the probability mass function of x. Okay, what we just seen there previously. What we have to do then is obtain the expected value of x, the expectation of x, okay, and the expectation of uh, x times x to the minus one. Now you're going to sort of see this one in particular a lot in. Uh, these sort of calculations, derivations of means for binomial and Poisson. You think, well, why do we use that one? Why is that one so particular? It's. I'll, I'll come to that shortly. I'm just rocking to my table here a bit, so I'll just let that settle there for a second. Anyway, uh, then we show have to show that uh, the expected value of x is equal to the variance of x, which is equal to lambda. Okay. So the first question here, I'll just move that up and let that settle, is that the... Uh, this is the probability mass function of x, which we're given at the start, okay? And what we're going to do here is replace the x terms with x plus 1 over here. So we have lambda to the x plus 1, okay? So that's that lambda x becomes lambda to the x plus 1. e to the minus lambda just gets left alone, okay? x factorial becomes x plus 1 factorial. So th this term here changes and this term here changes, okay? So here's how they change it. This is actually a sort of description of how they change. Lambda to the x plus 1 is actually lambda times lambda x. Okay. x plus 1 factorial is x plus 1 times x factorial. Essentially, rules uh, knowledge about the rules of uh, factorials and powers, and you know, in other cases, not here, but in other cases, logarithms comes in very useful. So uh, so essentially what we could do is just factor out the, uh, the lambda and over x plus 1. So we just have lambda, uh, over x, lambda over x plus 1 times the probability mass function. It actually is fairly simple uh, calculation. It just gets us, get, gets us off to a good start. Okay. Now, so the next one. Okay. So the expected value of x is the summations of the x times the probability of the probability mass function okay our probability of x equal to x capital x equal to x okay so essentially the probability mass function there okay and just actually i deliberately sort of use this notation here just to sort of emphasize the correspondence because that sort of becomes important for something i'm going to explain when i get a chance okay so that's lowercase x, by the way. That actually should be capital X. It's just a little bit hard to read when I handwrite everything. Okay. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to let uh, we're going to divide x by x factorial. So we get x to the x minus one factorial. Okay. Also, what we're going to do there's two parts to this. There's two little tricks to this. We're going to express lambda to the x as lambda times x uh, lambda times lambda to the x minus one. Okay. Now, um, so what happens there is the we and we filter out, we factor out this lambda here. Okay. So uh, we're just left with the, the the x cancels out with the x factorial to leave us with x minus one factorial. So it's desirable to work in terms of x minus 1 rather than x okay the reason for that will become clear okay because if we split this up into lambda times lambda to the x minus 1 what we have here is a probability mass or sorry have here is a probability mass function okay so this is the, the probability mass function for x minus 1 okay which is just sort of the opposite exercise to what we've done previously now the thing about this is, oh, just as a remark, we let x equal to one with the for up here, we start we are we're working with x equal to zero, or 
the, the summation from x equal to 0 to x equal to uh, x equal to infinity. I just have to change it slightly here so that we don't we're not dealing with uh, negative factorials. Okay, it doesn't really matter so much, but it just uh, just to be, uh, for the sake of proper mathematics um, that we actually adjust the sample space from one to infinity because uh, it uh, uh, minus one factorial just does not work. Okay, it, does, it just actually just has to be sort of excluded, but it doesn't change any other calculations. Now, uh, allowing for the fact that we've just changed the sample space, the uh, the sum of the PMS for x minus 1 actually has to equal 1. So this entire expression here has to equal to 1. Okay, So it's a fundamental probability. The sum of all PMFs for the entire sample space must equal to 1. Probability of x equal to 0, x equal to 1, x equal to 2 equals 1. Again, just discounting this case, for um, x equal to 0 is not valid for this particular case, but in general, probably x equal to 0. For the entire sample space, we're relevant. Again, just discounting this one for this particular case. Okay. So, the expected value of x is lambda times 1, which is lambda, which is the answer we're looking for. Okay. So, I'll just move to the next page now, just let the focus puller do its work. There we go. So the expected value of x times x minus 1. We're going to do something very similar here. Okay. x times x minus 1. Okay. And that's the probability mass function of um, uh, the probability mass function of x. Now just actually here is a remark. x equal to 0 uh, uh, is for the, the summations the sample space, we adjust the sample space to x equal 2 to infinity because x can't be equal to 0 or 1, okay? Or it, uh, we're, going to, we're going to adjust ourselves to a situation where we're going to get 0 or 1 because we can't have a negative probability. So we just have to adjust the sample space accordingly, okay? Now this doesn't actually work in this case, okay? Or you could get sorry. Actually, you could get negative probability, or you could get zero probabilities. So it's not actually an explanation; it's more demonstration. Okay. So if you actually try and evaluate this, where x equal to zero, you just get zero. Uh, zero times minus one, etc. Um, if you add it, let it equal to one, you get one times zero, etc. Okay. Now, not in this particular case, but there are other cases where you get negative probabilities, and that's not allowed. So you have to exclude it. Okay. So that's just a sort of quick, ex um, not an explanation, more a demonstration of why these, uh, the, the summation, the range of summations have to change. Uh, you have to update them, okay? It's just for a proper um, ca um, mathematics, proper statistics, okay? Now we're going to use the same trick as we've done the last time around. We're going to let lambda, we're going to try and get everything in terms of x minus 2. So lambda x is equal to lambda squared times uh, lambda to the x minus 2. x divided by x minus 1 over x factorial. That's 1 over x minus 2 lambda. Okay. So x by x minus 2 factorial. Okay. You get very tongue twisty, tongue twisted after a while. So the expected value of x times x minus 1 is fa uh, lambda squared times this summation of PMFs, like which we've already s said is equal to 1. So lambda squared equal to 1 is equal to lambda. Okay. Now, uh, this is important, actually. Why did we use uh, lambda, or why do we use the expected value of x minus x minus 1? There's a very good reason for that, particularly as the next question is to, to do with the variance. It's actually very simple to do this calculation as opposed to x squared. Okay. If you evaluate this, this is x squared minus x. But we can actually work like, but actually, because we're working on this basis here, it's actually to sort of work with the factorials when we're using these successive terms here. Okay, it's a sort of bit of a shortcut essentially. Do you know what? I think I'm, this video's gone on a bit, so I'm going to sort of pause and just start to set up a part two.